The U.S. men's national team is set to face Costa Rica this Wednesday after the pressing performance against Panama. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, host of Verticality Manager TV. Oh, I just used the V word. Oh, yes, I did. If you're new here, welcome to another preview for a U.S. men's national team match. We always do this before the matches, so if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. We'll be going through where you can watch the game, what to expect. We're going to dive into Costa Rica. I'll try to predict Greg Berhalter starting 11. I've done an okay job. Actually, the last match was just completely terrible. And with that said, at the end of the video, I'll give you my score prediction to what I think the score will be for this match against Los Ticos. So while you're at it, make sure to comment down below your prediction for this match, if you're optimistic or not, if you're a Costa Rican fan or just an American fan, either one. And make sure to hit the like button, it's a great way to support the channel if you want us to continue to do these types of content. With that said, let's get the preview started. The United States is set to face Costa Rica this Wednesday, October 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at the brand new Lower.com Stadium at Columbus, Ohio that will be replacing our historical crew stadium for World Cup qualifying. I guess we'll see some Zardas in this match and technically it's a homecoming match for Greg Berhalter. Uh, I hope we don't see Zardas, but let's be honest, there's a very, very good chance we're going to see Jesse Zardas on this match. If you're in the United States, you may watch this match at ESPN2, UNEMAS, and Today Any. Throughout history, the United States and Costa Rica have faced each other a total of 39 times. For these 39 matches, 18 of them ended with an American win, 16 with a Costa Rica win, and 5 draws. To say the least, this is a very, very balanced matchup. And there I go again, using another of Greg Berhalter's favorite words. Verticality, balanced. Maybe I'll use fluidity later in this video. Now, for the 18 American wins, 16 of them were at home. And for Costa Rica, they have won 10 out of their 16 wins also at home. So for this matchup specifically, home games have always played a big role, which we can hope it plays a big role again as well. But every time there's a host team in this matchup, there is a clear advantage. Now, the United States has won the last match against Costa Rica that were friendlies, but we have lost our last competitive match back in 2017 for World Cup qualifying at home, and it was 2-0, roughly about one month before Cuva happened. And in regards to any updates for the U.S. men's national team's current roster, Zach Steffen, Anthony Robinson, and Wes McKinney are all expected to be available for this match. Besides that, at the time of this recording on Monday, there's no other updates. Now let's dive into Costa Rica, and then I'll go into my predicted starting 11 for Greg Berhalter. But before we do that, I need to dive into Los Ticos. When it comes to World Cup qualifying, Costa Rica has been fairly successful in recent years. Uh, that's actually... An understatement. They've been very successful in these recent years. They were able to qualify in the 2002 World Cup, 2006, 2014, and 2018. Along with that, they were also able to reach the quarterfinals in the 2014 World Cup at Brazil, which for any CONCACAF nation, that is a huge accomplishment. Ask Mexico. When was the last time Mexico made it to the quarterfinals? In regards to their current roster, many call it experience. I personally call their current roster old. They average 29.5 years of age, which is roughly 30 years of age per player. I'm sorry, that's old. And obviously, experience as well. With age, experience comes along with it. Along with that, they still have Randall Leo from Nashville and Luis Diaz from Columbus Crew that are 24 and 22 years old respectively. So they're technically bringing that average age down. This team has a lot of players that are 34, 35, 36, some 37, 39 year olds players that I'm going to talk about in this video. So yes, they're old, but experience does play a role in this team as well. They have aged. A lot of the players in this roster were also in the 2014 roster for the World Cup run. Okay, but before I dive in to this current roster and how they got here, let's talk a little bit about their coaching staff situation, how we got where we are with Costa Rica very briefly. And then I'll talk about key players and some injuries that they might have and won't be playing. After finishing fourth in Nations League and, well, losing 4-0 to the United States in a friendly, Ronald Gonzalez was fired back in June, their previous coach. And from there, Luis Fernando Suarez, a Colombian manager, took over the national team with a goal to once again qualify Los Ticos to the World Cup. 
Now, ever since he took over, it seems like Costa Rica has been able to get wins against weaker opponents, but losing or tying against the tough ones. In Gold Cup, they managed to win all their group stage matches and then lost to Canada in the quarterfinals 2-0, which was technically the first tough opponent they faced, considering Jamaica is just generally a mess and they were in their group during Gold Cup. Now, for World Cup qualifying, they have three draws, one loss, and one win. And that loss came against Mexico, and that win came against El Salvador at Costa Rica. However, they seem to be getting some rhythm as of late, with a big comeback against El Salvador at home. Great comeback in the second half, led by Celso Borges and Brian Ruiz. And obviously, led by Kaylor Navas. To be fair, El Salvador could have won that game. But regardless, Costa Rica won, and they seem to be picking up momentum off of that. We'll see against the United States. One thing we do have to say about the Costa Rica national team is they have been struggling to score. They only scored in two out of the five matches in World Cup qualifying. That was against Jamaica, which is probably the worst team in the final eight. And they scored on the last match against El Salvador at their 2-1 win. However, the defense has been very solid and most of that has to do with the presence of Kaylor Navas. So Costa Rica has had three goals scored, three goals allowed, and six points in a total of five matches. All right, now let's talk about the current team their preferred formation, and key players as well. They have tried different formations under new management, but there is no question that the preferred formation they like to use is a 4-2-3-1 with veteran Brian Rees at the 10. So with that said, against the United States, I expect Costa Rica to line up on a 4-2-3-1. Could they be different? Yeah, th there's a chance that could be different. But if I had to bet money on it, it would probably be a 4-2-3-1 formation and Brian Ruiz will probably be their 10. Now let's talk about the key players in this team real quick. Just a few. Every starter essentially is a key player, but I'm going to name a few because I can't talk about the entire roster. Well, the first key player I want to talk about is their biggest difference maker. Kaylor Navas, the best goalkeeper in CONCACAF, a world-class goalkeeper that should be starting for PSG. He is a different, big difference maker. So obviously, Kaylor Navas, everyone knows about him. The second one I want to talk about is also someone everyone should be very, very, very familiar with, which is Brian Ruiz, despite being 36. The captain of Costa Rica is still a tough player to deal with and currently plays for Alajulense at the Costa Rican League. He'll probably be playing at the 10 and will be one of the creators in the midfield and even a goal scoring threat. The other player I want to talk about as well also plays for Alajulense. It's another midfielder in Costa Rica and he's been doing well, especially in the last match. It's Celso Borges and he has good chemistry with Brian Rees essentially since they play for the same team. He got a goal and an assist during the 2-1 win against El Salvador. He is a quality veteran midfielder and has great chemistry with Brian Rees as I said. Now the other two players I want to point out is Francisco Calvo from the Chicago Fire and Oscar Duarte from Levante which likely will be the two center backs on the strong Costa Rican defense. So it's not just the goalkeeper, the two center backs also are fairly good quality. Mostly Oscar Duarte in my personal opinion, okay? I would like to hear yours, actually. And if you haven't already, let me remind everyone, make sure to hit the like button, comment your score prediction, and your predicted starting 11 for Costa Rica, if you're from Costa Rica, and the American one, if you're American. Now, two guys I want to mention off the bench are two MLS prospects, Randall Leo from Nashville and Luis Diaz that will be at home that plays for the Columbus crew. Now, Diaz was not even at the bench on the last match against El Salvador, so I'm not sure if he'll be available for this one. But since some players are not available, I think Luis Diaz will at least be at the bench. Now, Randall Leo is very likely to be at the bench and probably expect him to come in in this match. Very talented player from Nashville. Okay, now let's go through a couple absences they have for whatever reason in players that were added to this roster actually some very very experienced players so for this october camp 19 year old center forward from 20 in the dutch league manfred ugande rejected the call due to not liking the coach you know, imagine if players rejected the U.S. men's national team call because they didn't like Greg. Giancarlo Gonzalez, the veteran 33-year-old center back, also rejected a call to give opportunity to young players. He has over 80 caps on the national team, but I don't think his absence would cause a major impact in my personal opinion. Now, those are players that rejected the calls. Now, let's talk about players that were in the roster and are not available for this match due to injury, suspension, or whatever it is. The first one is a very important one. Veteran Joel Campbell that plays for Monterey at Liga MX. Well, we all know him very well. He scored two goals on us back in 2016 at World Cup qualifying during that 4-0 loss. He won't be available for this match due to an ankle sprain. That is a big one for the United States. A big win and we're not going to celebrate someone's injury but it does benefit the united states quite a bit now they won't only be missing him they'll also be missing the center forward jose guillermo ortiz due to covid he also did start their last match against el salvador alvaro saborillo former rsl and 
I actually thought he was retired at this point, was called in at age 39. Christian Bolaños, also at age 37, has been called up. Both of these players play for the Costa Rican League right now, and they're pretty old, 37 and 39. As I said, this team is very, very experienced. That does it for the Costa Rica side. Now, let's try... Let's talk about Greg. Let's talk about Greg. Let's talk about balance. Let's talk about fluidity. Let's talk about verticality. You know, all that good stuff. So usually in these previews, I'll do an attempt to predict what Greg Berhalter will do in this game. But in this video, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to try to predict the starting 11 if Greg is really trying to keep his job. So essentially almost the best 11 that I think Greg would put out. Okay. So it might look a little bit better than the actual lineup. We'll see. Let me give it a shot. And I am going to start by saying I think we're going to go on a 4-3-3 formation once again. And see, it's an emergency win. He needs to win this game. His job is on the line. In my opinion, I don't think he's going to get fired, but it could be. He needs to win. So 4-3-3. And we're going to start, obviously, Matt Turner will probably be our goalkeeper. I don't think he's going to go with Zach Steffen. Even though I think Zach Steffen does deserve an opportunity, I think we're going with Turner on goal. The right back for this match will likely be Serginho Dest, the left back, Anthony Robinson, and yes, he will be back. The two defenders, I wouldn't be surprised if he started Chris Richards with Miles Robinson. Why do I think that? Walker Zimmerman played two straight games, likely going to be rested. Mark McKenzie was not good, so I think we're going to see Chris Richards and Miles Robinson, which is personally what I want to see as well. Now, the midfield, I think we're going to have Tyler Adams at the 6, Luca De La Torre, and Weston McKinney at the 8. One can only hope, but don't be surprised if Greg does this for this for this game specifically. Now, for the forwards, I think he's going to put Brandon Harrison on the right wing. I don't think Ariola is going to start once again. I think Matthew Hoppe will actually start on the left wing, and Ricardo Pepe will be back at the center forward position. But I do expect Jesse Zardes to come in throughout this game. I really do, unfortunately. That probably will happen. So just to recap, the starting 11 will be Matt Turner on goal, Dest on the right, Robinson on the left, Chris Richards and Miles Robinson as the center backs, Adams, De La Torre, and Weston McKinney on the midfield, Brandon Harrison and Hoppy as the wingers, and Ricardo Pepe as the center forward. All right, guys, this does it for the preview. Now, obviously, as I always do towards the end, I will be giving you my score prediction for this match. And, you know, it's hard to remain optimistic after the Panamanian game. But we do need to remain optimistic. And Columbus has been the home of the Dos Acero, especially against Mexico. So I'm going to go with United States 2, Costa Rica 0. Dos Acero for the United States of America. We bounce back. We're not going to play well again because it's very hard to play well with Greg. I think the problems will still be there. But I think we're going to pull off a 2-0 win. And we're going to reach 11 points in World Cup qualifying. And we'll be over halfway there to Qatar. And we will make it to Qatar. All right, make sure to comment yours down below your prediction. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Thank you everyone that joined the membership of the channel for supporting the channel and getting also extra content, the extra videos. Thank you very much. Thank you you that are watching the video and hitting the like button and supporting us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. See you guys at the watch along this Wednesday. Thank you for watching and have a great day.